Uh, radiant measure. Uh, this is the uh, concluding phase of problem set one. Uh, first of all, a definition of radiant measure. If we take a sector of a circle, S we call arc length. That's the length around here. R is radius. Theta is the angle. Uh, theta is equal to S over R. It's just a ratio of arc length to radius. Uh, that proportion is uh, dependent upon the shape, not the size of the circle. We can use, it a use a simple example here. Suppose we have a quarter of a circle. This would be a right angle. And <clears throat> arbitrarily, I'll make the radius 5. Uh, the circumference is 2 pi r, 2 pi 5, 10 pi. That would be the whole circumference following this dotted line. A quarter of that is 2.5 pi. And so the angle here, theta, is... 2.5 pi divided by 5, and 2 and a half over 5 is nothing more than a half. So we have pi over 2, and we can say radians. And of course, we know that is 90 degrees. So a right angle is pi over 2 radians. Uh, 3.14 divided by 2 is 1.57. So if you want a decimal approximation, 1.57 radians. Uh, you can double both sides of this, uh, this conversion factor. Twice that is pi radians. And that's 180 degrees. Uh, that's a fairly familiar uh, conversion factor if you've worked with radians before. So let me show you a couple problems. <clears throat> They're good to know. Let's suppose we have, for instance, 5 twelfths pi radians, and we want to know how many degrees that is. We need to multiply by a fraction where we want degrees on top, radians on the bottom. That way the radians will cancel and leave degrees. And so we use this conversion factor, 180 goes on top, and pi radians on the bottom. <clears throat> So you need to somehow simplify this fraction. There's pi here and pi here. The pi's cancel. And then we have 12 can go into 180. 12, you can do that on a calculator if you want. 12 goes into 180 15 times. So you really have 5 times 180 degrees over 12. And uh, 12 goes into that 15 times. So you have 5 times 15 degrees or 75 degrees. 5 twelfths pi is equal to 75 degrees. <clears throat> uh, we can go backwards. For instance, let's suppose we have 225 degrees. We want to multiply by a fraction. Radians on top, degrees on the bottom. We want degrees to cancel, leave radians. And so we have to take the uh, number of radians, which is pi, and then the equivalent to pi is 180 degrees. We can move our degree symbol over. <clears throat> and then we'll leave pi in the answer. And we can, we can simplify 225 over 180. You can have a spiffy calculator if you want, but 45 divides into each of these. Uh, 45 goes into that 5 times, 45 goes into that 4 times. So that's really 5 over 4 pi. You could divide 45 into that 5 times, 45 into that 4 times. <clears throat> Use a calculator if you're not that can be not that. So familiar with this sort of uh, reduction. Uh, one single note, 5 quarter pi radians, quite often we leave 
the units off. And we assume radians. <clears throat> and there's a reason behind this convention, and it probably has to do with some mad physicists. If you take theta is equal to uh, arc length over radius, uh, if we assign some sort of units to this, this could be meters, this could be meters. And what happens if you cancel out the units? It's a dimensionless quantity. And so, uh, so that's why sometimes the units are left off. If you put radians here, then sometimes physics equations having to do with rotational motion especially, uh, we end up with different units on each side of the equation. So what do we do? We just pretend it doesn't exist. And that makes our units balance. That keeps the physicist happy, and they don't go home and build death rays, uh, which we don't want that. So that's a convention. If you, uh, it, you can leave the units off, it's assumed to be radians. Degrees, you put a degree symbol, uh, no units, it's radians. So there's some exercises you can work through that. We have another exercise here. There's actually two limits in your packet. I thought I'd go through one. You can copy this into your packet. You can do the second one for homework. Two important limits. Uh, we're going to work... Uh, this trigonometry, we're going to work up to and including uh, a couple important derivatives that come about in Calculus 1. So this will ho hopefully bridge the gap between your trig knowledge and uh, where you need to be in the beginning of Calculus. Well, first of all, if you look at this fraction sine x over x, in the coming problem set, you'll see why this is an important limit. Uh, we want to investigate the limit as x goes to 0 sine x over x. There's no units here, so it's radians. If there was a degree, there would be a degree symbol. Uh, so we're going to look at this fraction. Let x go to 0. So I chose 1.1.01.001. And also, you can come at it from the negative side, negative 1, negative 0.1, on down. And you can evaluate this on a calculator. You end up with 0 0.841, 0 0.998, 0 0.99998, and then 0 0.999998. And... Uh, as x gets closer to 0, that's close to 0. What's happening to this? It's getting closer and closer to 1. If I add a 0 here, I add two more 9s. And if I add another 0, I add two more 9s. You can see the pattern. Uh, a bunch of 9s. Uh, yay long, we could have nines going all the way out my window across the street if we wanted. That would be very, very close to one. Uh, on the negative side, we end up with an exact replica of this pattern here, 0 0.84, 998, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 8, et cetera, et cetera. It approaches one here. In this case, we say the limit is one, just by looking at that pattern. It's as simple as that. You can provide a proof. The proof uses something called the pinching theorem or the sandwich theorem <clears throat> and, uh, or the squeeze theorem. Those are three different names for the same theorem, and you can actually prove this. But this is just, we're not worried about a proof in here. Just worry about what's going on numerically and to get you used to this limit. So uh, it's not bad pedagogy if you learn how to work with something and then after the fact see the proof. Proof is something you already understand. So. Uh, so that concludes the trigonometry for this uh, section.